looking for some new podcasts to listen to? Well, Rat Sound Review Network has plenty of shows to choose from. Like Rat Sound Review, where they discuss the latest rock and metal news, as well as interviews and albums. Album vs. Album, the King Diamond Podcast, with Wayne Noon, Greg Noggle, and sometimes this guy. Smack him a gob! Ralph Vieira is also on our network with the Vieira Bowl. There's also Old Man Metal's Musings, where he discusses heavy metal and beer. Music is Life with Lou Mavs. The Right Opinion for Those Who Love Politics. A South Park podcast called Suck My Balls. The Infinite Fringe. A watch-along wrestling show called Beyond Bushido. Ex Stradivarius guitarist, the Timo Tolki podcast. And the great Harry Barnett with I Don't Even Like Podcast and The Laugh Cast. So check out RatsoundReview.com or search RatsoundReview on YouTube, Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. Broadcast belongs to them. What's up, everybody? Oh, Ralph's doing some movements here. Look at Strike that. Strike a pose. Happening. Wow. Vogue. That's hot. You should do that more often. Oh, oh bro. I'm walking <laughs> like an Egyptian now. Walk Holy like shit. an Egyptian. What about you, Lou? You got anything? I do the shimmy. My back <laughs> is really hurting from sitting in this chair. Where's the Tylenol? I don't really know. Doctor Lango, give me the news, cause I got a bad case of worshiping king. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, this week we are. Yeah, well, this week we are up to the album Conspiracy. I have two different versions. I have the original one. Let me see that other one. And this one's the one with the uh, logo. If you couldn't read the, the smaller one. Yeah, it was the the band. Uh, I guess what's this from Japan or something? Japanese the issue, Japanese yeah. Version. For uh, it banned this for cover, whatever right? reason, <laughs> for whatever reason, that makeup design of his was banned. In the, yeah, probably because of the Japan. blood. Are you serious? But, yep. But everything else, pretty much. I don't know what it has to do with the blood because New Japan pro that. wrestling they get bloody all the time, and that was on that television. True. That is very. Uh, I think yes. it's got something to do with the symbols in the makeup. And King doesn't wrestle. And. Uh, not that we true. Know. That, that's still is not much blood as that was on the Muda scale. <laughs> that's true, but that's two different album covers. Actually, there's a third album cover, an original one with the you know the artwork that's inside. That's the best one. That is the best one. Mm-hmm. I didn't know they had that as an album cover. I always said this should have been the album cover. It Maybe colorize it, but still, right? It should know? have been. It should have been in color because it would have fit with uh, them a little bit more. Because when they, I know they had the picture and then they put this border around it. It looked kind of stupid. I think if they just did the picture itself without the border, it would have worked fine. But uh, mm-hmm. I love that. I love that picture. Looking, that. looking at that album cover, though, with King's face on it, you wouldn't know by looking at it that it was a sequel to them. Right. 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 Because no. King's a little kid, little, right? Right. He's a little kid right. in the story, right? In, the, in yeah, them. In no facial hair, no blood on the head. No. <laughs> no. He's only like, I think, 10 or 10 in them. Yeah. Yeah. It is what it is, but uh, the album Conspiracy is a continuation of the story told on them. Uh, once, big, once back inside the old house, Amon, 
Uh, King watched his grandmother vanish by the words, I bet you're dying for a cup of tea. Uh, not a trace did she leave behind. Nobody was to be found upstairs either. The cellar was empty. The entire house was empty. Only memories of long-gone friends were buried on the thick dust that now covered the house. It had been 18 years since King was last in this house, waiting in his mother's bedroom to be taken away by Dr. Landau and the police. He spent nine years in asylum, trying to get his mind back to normal under the supervision of Dr. Landau. Then finally released, he spent another nine years in absolute solitude at a place unknown to us. During this time, he never saw his mother. Now, two weeks have passed since King returned to the old house, which is actually his, according to uh, grandmother's will. And we think it's time for him to contact us again. And then we start with at the graves. Uh, <clears throat> King goes. I think his most effective opening intro ever, I yep. have to say. Yes. And that that's a that's a big reason why I really wish um that, that drawing had been made the album cover because at the graves, the beginning of it really evokes that uh, hammer horror Vincent Price, Peter right. Cushing type feel, yeah. and I think that picture would have gone great with it. But anyway, exactly. Exactly. I was gonna say it kind of reminds me of like a soundtrack to like a Brian Usno or Stuart Gordon film a little bit. Kind of reminds me of uh, the keyboard <laughs> type synthesizers that you hear in the movie Society, which, by the way, is fucking disgusting and highly recommended. <laughs> I've never seen it. Oh, you have to call again. Society. I'll rent it. It's great. Yeah. Ah, you know what I'm Re- talking about. Reanimator is the best, though. I have. Oh, I have. Best. I have the. I have the collection <laughs> of Reanimator. All the movies. Nothing like a head giving head. <laughs> That's right. How do you feel, Doctor Hill? <laughs> I feel pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I brought up Stuart Gordon. Rest in peace, good sir. All right. At the graves, uh, King goes to the gravesite of Missy and asks her to rise from her grave. Spirits rise from the grave, and King also sees Missy. Uh, King asks, where is the door to the other side? And Missy tells King behind the graves leads the gate to the dead. But they have to leave before the dawn. Or else by the sun, they will burn. Like Greg said, this is an awesome opener to an album. Probably my favorite King Diamond song ever. And just in general, my, one of my favorite songs ever. Um... The, the creepy keyboard thing in the beginning and just the, the way the song just shifts to all different, like, uh, goes fast and slow and it has all these different parts and a very progressive song. And actually, I think it's the most progressive song in this whole album, really. Because them had a lot of progressiveness to it and I don't think this album had that much. This was a more straightforward kind of album. I they heavy, heavied it up a little bit more on this, too, I think. Yeah, I think so, too. But uh, and it's also just a cool story and within the song about him, you know, talking to his sister and then hearing, you know, the voices and everything come through. And it's just, uh, just an awesome song. I just love this song. Yeah, I yeah. love the. Oh, sorry, Rafael, yeah, go ahead. You first. Um, no, uh, it is my favorite off the. Yeah, it's one of my favorite King Diamond songs. It's my favorite off this album. And you know, I always have to quote lines from songs. Yes. I mean, I'm, I mean my I'm gonna, favorite I'm gonna, line. Gonna... Go ahead. Is right after, right before it gets heavy, where he's like, "Rise, rise, yeah. little sister, rise!" <laughs> <laughs> and from your grave, little life. sister. All over my head. <laughs> Badass, you know. They are back to share my life. They are back, and, you know. It's and, and and it has like to me like the greatest mid tempo changes through a King Diamond solo song. Yeah. It's the closest you can get to Merciful Fate out. Merciful Fate are the masters of it. I think mm-hmm. in this one, it's like the best King Diamond song with all these crazy changes. Right? It's a very long song, mm-hmm. but it, it keeps you interested. It doesn't bore yeah. for you right. at all. You know, I absolutely love it. Favorite song off the album. Love it. Yeah, yeah like you said. King Diamond song. I said. Yeah. Like you said, it's long, but it doesn't feel long because it's so good. It keeps you interested listening to the whole thing. Yeah, I uh, I love the tempo changes in it too. I love the dynamics, um, and uh, I love uh, where I actually have notes written down for this. It's so, like at five twenty six, it breaks into a part that's reminiscent of immigrant song a little bit, right before going into the next solo break. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't help but go ah when I heard that part. I was like, oh, King. <laughs> I'm gonna have to, li- I'm gonna have but, to listen. Um, to that. But before I. Uh, 
before we move on with the rest of the album, I just want to say, with all due respect to Denner and Sherman, that uh, Andy LaRock is as equally as important to the songwriting and atmosphere oh, yeah. that King sets. <laughs> and I think it's criminal that he's underrated. But you know what, though? We appreciate it. We're fans of his. We're metal fans. Forget what everybody else says. Yeah, he definitely... Uh, I guess... I don't really... Well, I guess he is kind of underappreciated in a way. Although... He's, a, he's got his own style, too. Like, when he does that... Wah, 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 and nobody right. does... Nobody plays guitar like that. No. He's identifiable. It's like... You know when it's a good the guitar player, when you hear and you go, I know who that is. You yeah. I mean? yeah. Oh, yeah. Even on uh, when he plays <laughs> on individual thought patterns. Yeah, on jazz. Like that, yeah. You know you it's hear. him, too. You hear it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but put him with anyone, and they always seem to match him in terms of uh, skill set, <laughs> melody, and uh, quality, the craftsmanship, you know? And I'm a guitar player, so, of course, I gravitate towards that, and I just I just love it, you know? Everything he does with King, it's, it's, it's not just great songwriting, it's composition, you know? Andrew Lloyd Webber, eat your heart out. <laughs> <laughs> and you can understand why King would keep him. Yeah. Unlike Merciful Fate, where they need dinner. Right. That's a whole yeah. other <laughs> I miss Mickey D personally too, but yeah, yeah. you're right. Uh, yeah, it's... I have, I have, I, I was thinking of this today while listening to this album. I said, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised Mickey D returns to King. You know, if the Scorp because Scorpions, come on, they've been around since the '60s. How how much longer do they got? You know, want to retire already? <laughs> Yeah, they was. You be quiet, goddamn it! I fucking love <laughs> hey, this. Hey, ain't nothing hey, without I'm Uzi. Huge, I'm a huge Scorpion fan, but I kind of like I don't know. After Blackout, I love the first thing was okay, but I, I haven't really, really dug anything they've done after it. But everything from Blackout down is fucking. They're all masterpieces. In Trance, my favorite, Taken by Force and Love Drive. I'm a huge Scorp fan. It's huge, you know. Me too. But I mean, come on. I mean, how long do they have? You know. You know, I, good... I wouldn't even bother. And you know, point. you know, and I and I've said this before, and I'll say it again: the day Claw's mind dies, all these motherfuckers that don't praise him will be using him as a profile picture. Oh yeah, Claw's <laughs> mind is so fucking incredible. His voice, and yep. I think it's very underappreciated. You know, so do I. It's like when Brad Delp from uh, Boston died. Everybody's like, "What a great singer!" It's like, yeah, now you're saying it. I think the same thing's going to happen with uh, Claw's mind because he's got. An identical, powerful, and amazing voice. And what other singer live will say to a crowd, and the crowd goes crazy? You know? Yeah. You know what the fuck he's saying, but he's going to go, He doesn't even have to say anything important. He just runs out and goes, Yeah, squat you on. And everybody, oh, yeah. all he did was say the name of the fucking band. Rave <laughs> Claw's Mind's one of my favorite singers. He fucking is. And we're happy for Mickey D because he's got a good meal ticket, so good yeah, for him. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, come on. I mean, wouldn't it be great to see Mickey D back with King Diamond? Yes. Oh, yes, it would awesome. be. Yeah. He did go on, um, I think, on one of the tours. He did, like, make a guest appearance once. Yes, he did. Yeah. And I think he I actually know. said on stage that, you know, is his biggest regret letting go of him. Yeah. I think he actually said that on stage, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't blame him. Mickey D's a monster. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then Don Dawkins got him after this album. <coughs> well, yay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good job with him too. I love Dawkins. I'm, I'm uh, the minority, I guess. Yeah, I hate the Scorpions and I don't like Dawkins. You hate? I, yeah, I, 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 I love them. See you later. I love them both. <laughs> Ralph and I are going to zip tie you to a chair and have you listen to Tokyo tapes in oh. trance, taken by force. Oh, if we do that, dude, he'll be he'll transform. Blood. Yeah, he totally deny will. those out. Sales are scaring. Yeah, I've got I've got the Japanese press, the Tokyo tapes too. Nice. So total high definition. Great. We'll burn the sky. Picture life. Fucking yeah. right. Hell yeah. Do you want to add anything else to uh, at the graves, Greg? Uh, not too much. I pretty much agree with all you guys. It's definitely my favorite from, uh, the album and quite possibly the most accomplished song they did. I really, for me, I think this is, uh, King's Steely Dan album, if you will. This is where everything was completely 100% perfect and every song 
just sounds like it's totally second nature to these guys. It's just so fluid. Yeah. I agree. Uh, Sleepless Nights. King will do anything to see Missy again, and he makes a deal with them. Uh, he agrees to tend to the graves while they get the house, Amon, but keep in mind they will only come there at night. Uh, King's very tired. Very tired. Are you all right, Ralph? I'm sorry. Do you need a drink? Yeah, that's my be- problem. I went down the wrong tube. Oh, jeez. Oh, that happens to me way too much, man. It is. I, like, that's one thing I didn't bring as a drink with me. And I can feel my throat getting dry right now. <sighs> anyway, uh, Sleepless Nights, uh, King's uh, only video off of this album, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, with that Snowy Sean drums, I think, right? Snowy Sean drums? Video? Yes. yes. In the video, yeah. Right. That's because we were talking about earlier, uh, Mickey D, this is his last album with King Diamond. So. Yes, he was the session member was for this album. Member. Yep. Um, what was I even saying? Oh, uh, the video was pretty cool. It got a lot of rotation on MTV. Um, great song. Oh, and I do have some tidbits about this because I was reading up some stuff. Uh, some website. I don't know what website it is. I'm sorry. They did an interview with Andy LaRock. And um, Andy said he, he, that the guitar riff was inspired from uh, the Black Sabbath song called Air Dance. God, I love that song. Wow, I could see that actually. I would have yeah. never thought of that if you didn't say it. Yeah, before. that that, that middle section. Right. The acoustic yeah. passages right before, in it, I can see that. Right yeah. before it goes into the jazz part, I think. Right. Yeah. That's such yep. an incredible song. Air Dance is like it's in my top ten. I did a, you know, Black Sabbath is my favorite band of all time. I did a top fifty, and Air Dance is in the top ten. Oh wow! Nice. Love that song. I had to go back and check out the song. I know the song, but I just, you know, haven't heard it in forever. So it's a, it's a grower, yeah. man. I didn't get yeah. it. You know, Never Say Die was the very first Black Sabbath album I bought when it was new. I own Paranoid and We Sold Our Souls. So I bought that one when it was new, and I didn't get it. Air Dance mm-hmm. many years later. Mm-hmm. And now I, that it's, a, it's a very com- complex song, it sounds like. Yeah. Well, Junior's Eyes and Air Dance are my favorite tracks off that album. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Love Love Junior's Junior's I read that. Eyes. I can definitely hear that inspiration, especially like you said in that middle section there. But uh, yeah, great song, another great song. Uh, it's got a great chorus. I love how it goes with the acoustic guitars in the beginning, and then oh no, actually it starts off heavy in the beginning, then it goes to the acoustic guitars or whatever. But yeah, just just an awesome song, Ralph. Yeah, should I say my favorite line? Yes, please do. <laughs> yes. Then let's make you an eternal deal. Yes. You will attend to the graves. You'll come to the house and keep in mind, we only come here at night. I love that. And that whole, you know, when the clock strikes midnight, it's so yeah. hooky. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Those hooks, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, so we drank the tea, that little part. Yeah, it's just had these great, yeah. you know, mellow, heavy, mellow. And it just flows so well. You know, it's just mm-hmm. a perfect song. And this will be my second favorite off the album. So it's a one-two punch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Nothing. Nothing about the album seems forced at all. Uh, and again, <laughs> um, my favorite part is the section beginning at two thirty-eight, where Larock and uh, Black are, in my opinion, they're giving guitarists like Yngwie a run for their money. Mm-hmm. They got some really good melodic passages going on over there. And uh, I think if you're a guitar player, if you want to hear what it sounds like when harmonizing is done right, listen to this song. <laughs> And not the clip from YouTube. I mean, like, actually listen to the whole song on the CD. One interesting thing, though, uh, at 327, King sounds like he's going into Cookie Monster vocal territory. But it works. (laughs) But it works. Mm -hmm. It does work. Greg. Second favorite song as well. I think the best single he's ever written. Just perfect song. (laughs) It's uh, it's 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 really it's so beautifully crafted. It reminds me of something that would be on like a '70s Alice Cooper album, actually, or a Queen record. Yeah. So now you mentioned favorite single. Now, that's out of uh, Welcome Home. Family and, Ghost. Uh, yeah, Family Ghost or or Sleepless Nights. Yeah, definitely Sleepless, Sleepless Nights. Still the best Nights. one. There's no oh, video yeah. for it, but I remember the Eye was a single. The Eye of the Witch. Uh, was yeah. it uh, Uninvited Guests uh, a video? Uh, no. It was, but that's also Merciful Fate. Not- oh, jeez, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, 
I'm thinking uh, back to uh, yeah, them. The, what's the second track? The the invisible guest. The invisible guest. Yeah. No, I'm thinking uninvited guests. I remember I got a uh, <coughs> a, a, a compilation uh, when I worked at a college radio station when I was at St. John's. Uh, Metal Blade as a thank you for constantly putting their artists in my top ten as opposed to Limp Bizkit. Uh, <laughs> always sent me. Uh, they always sent me great shit. One of them was a compilation uh, DVD of uh, music videos. Had like Flotsam and Jetsam on there. Had um, had Guar, which was great, and it had uh, it had Merciful Fate. So for some reason those stuck out in my head. So if if I remember right, the Guar video on that specific compilation is for Meat Sandwich and uh, <laughs> Brody no. takes on Jesus one on one on basketball. <laughs> Love that video, but no, that wasn't it. It was sick. Of, it was sick of you. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, must be a different compilation then. I ha- I have a bunch of the old Metal Meister ones and uh, it was a Metal Meister and, one, yeah. yeah. I have one Metal Meister one that has a uh, Pirates from Armor Saint that's on none of their albums. It's the only Metal oh, Meister cool. one. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. All right. Uh lies. King sees Dr. Landau in therapy, but for every question King was asked, he gives a lie. Uh King tells the doctor all his nightmares are dead and gone. He sleeps like a baby, and there was never a them. The doctor sees no trace of insanity and suggests to King it's time to have a visit from his mother. I like this one, too. Um, it's kind of, it kind of went down a little bit here with this song, but <clears throat> I like every song on his album. It's, it's, it, as opposed to like them, had some like uh, you know ups and downs a little bit. But uh, same, same thing with this song. It's got a great chorus. It's a cool, uh, cool verses. I like the story in this one, too. Oh, that's the other thing I like about this album as well. Almost every song could kind of be on its own. You don't have to listen to this album all the way through. Mm -hmm. Especially, like, with Sleepless Nights. I mean, that's right there. I can just be... Just listen to it regardless, you know? It doesn't have to be part of a story. But, uh, yeah, another great song. Ralph. My one? Did I say Lou or did I say Ralph? Oh, I didn't hear you. Can't you tell the difference? I didn't hear you. Listen up. I want to throw it to Lou. <laughs> Go, Lou. And I throw it back to Ralphie. <laughs> Give it to Lou. He's got all the notes. I was School going in bus. order. I only have one thing to say about this song. Good. Go. Metallica wishes they could write like this. And that's oh. it. Rob, back to you. Oh. oh. All right. There's there's a riff uh, right before the vocals come on. And there's all, it also reappears toward the end. Go listen to the song Slime from Frank Zappa. It's the same damn riff. So I'm like, holy it shit. Yes. That's, the, that's the slime that's... riff. You know. I was like, dude, that's, 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 uh, I'm not sure if Andy, you know, you know how he got air dance. I'm not sure if he was listening to Overnight Sensation when he wrote this awesome. song. But, but yeah, I did notice that. And here's my favorite line. There's two of them, actually. Um, uh, my favorite is like, uh, Dr. Landau, my God, I hate his breath. Yes. <laughs> yes. Give him a Tic Tac then, you know? <laughs> uh, and I like when he says, I should have taken his stethoscope and forced it down his throat. Yeah. That was pretty cool. You know, as a song, I I love this song. Don't get me wrong. It's going to sound like I'm bashing it because yeah. it kind of is my least favorite on here yeah. because <clears throat> the changes are a little too abrupt, even though it doesn't bother me. It, Somehow, some some of the changes don't really fit well. I absolutely love the bridge, and of course the great playing. But as a song, uh, it's it's a little, it's pretty out there, you know. Throwing throwing a lot into this song with those little keyboard passages and shit. You know, it's like they could have they they could have called this song "Kitchen Sink," you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I dig it. I dig it. You know, it's just my least favorite on here. Yeah. <clears throat> Greg. Right. I like it, but same thing. I think they threw a little bit too much into it. Feels like it goes by a little t- too fast, almost like it's incomplete. But it's still a great song. Although I, I, uh, I will also say the uh, the the change ups of it, I think, fits real well after the one two punch of the uh, album opening, though. Hmm. Musically, it fits perfect in the context of the album. Musically, it, the the music of the song fits perfectly. After the first two songs, I think. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Before it, it could have just really been, you know? yeah, it could have been refined slightly yeah. better though. 
But uh, just the shove the stethoscope down the throat is my favorite line from the whole record. I I love the way he says that. He, like, he says it real fast too. It's kind of I like that. Yeah, and with such dripping disdain. Yeah. Fuck Doctor Landa. <laughs> I love his black sense of humor. Yes. A uh, visit from the dead. King is dreaming, and all of a sudden, the bed moves, and King can't see a thing. But here's Missy. Uh, she tells him to beware, and something bad is coming his way. King tries to get Missy to tell, but she said, just beware, and she will send him in a dream. I really like this song. It has a really singable chorus to it. Just very melodic. Um, uh, yeah, it's just an awesome song. I mean, it's just... It's another one. I mean, it's kind of uh, similar in a way to, uh, I guess, maybe um, uh, at the graves a little bit. You know, after they get past the, uh, you know, the harp, the uh, piano keyboard it has, part. Of it. it has a very ghostly similar feel to feel it. to it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But another one of my favorite songs. Everything is just very catchy in the song. A lot of really great guitar work in the song. <clears throat> a lot of cool uh, verses, parts, and. My favorite is the chorus. I just love how it's, you know, it must be a visit from the dead. I just, I like that. Uh, Greg. Great. Switching it up. Now. Great. Great harmonies on this song, specifically on the chorus. Yes. Um, it's just, it's it's almost magical how King sounds. Yeah. Very uh, peculiar song, but works very well. Yes, it does. Uh, Meanie my Lou. Um, <laughs> see what I, I was expecting you to go to Ralph first. Um, nah, okay, what do I got? Beautiful acoustic intro that can only make you anticipate when it kicks up. At 37 seconds in, Laura breaks into an awesome uh, descending chromatic scale, which I was like, oh, I was quite taken aback by it. And just when you expect the demonic turn, it keeps going. Then all of a sudden at 208, it breaks into your territory now you're like ah okay now this is where i wanted to go and uh again it's a testament to the composition skills of uh king diamond and any laroque and i really have to give it i really have to give much respect to the guitar team of people like and andy i mean they pull it off as good on this album as they did on them so you know and i it's just it's it, it pains me that they don't get enough credit as composers. You know, it, it really doesn't. But like I said, this is heavy metal. Normies, you're welcome to try it. But if you don't like it, get out. That's it. Ralph. I love it. <clears throat> Great. Love that mellow intro. And I love how <clears throat> the guitar kind of like builds up the, the riffage before it goes oh, into yeah. this. Great yeah. mid-tempo metallic song. You know, unfortunately, though, I don't have a favorite line from this song. No. Uh, <clears throat> but that's my only gripe. It's a very minor gripe. Um, but <clears throat> this is a great track. It's uh, one of my favorite, probably my third favorite on this album. Mm. I really do love a, a Visit from the Dead. I think it's awesome, well constructed, and well thought out, you know. <clears throat> I, I like how the, the beginning, like he's describing like the uh, all the... Um, what the hell's the line in the beginning of the song? They're on the acoustic. Uh, all the flowers and all the trees or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Just, I, I, you know, you can just picture that he, in your head. As you he's go, he goes to the grave, right? On that song? Does he go um, to right. visit his... To, yeah, to I think so. Missy, I think. Could be wrong. <clears throat> no, no. This is the, the song where he's in bed. Oh, okay. And he's, yeah, he's, before uh, the, the dream, yeah. The dream, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, this is the dream. This is the first part of the dream. Okay. Yeah. So that's it for side one. We are going to go to now uh, our interview that me and Greg did with Pete Black. So anything you want to say about the interview, Greg? Yes, we talk about Geisha, and it's pretty damn cool. Oh, yes, that's right. <laughs> we did. We did talk about Geisha. And uh, to Black Totem, yeah. too, as well. Yeah, yeah. No, Pete Black was an awesome guy. Great interview. And uh, some some pretty cool stuff about how things on this album were recorded and written. But uh, also, if you're just a fan of guitar work, of his guitar work in general, talk about his whole career. That's right. And we will go to that now. And we will see you guys next time. Until then, anybody Smack else want to... Smack on the cob! 
you want to tell your show before we leave, Ralph? Uh, the Vieira Vault Podcast <clears throat> and Almost 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 Human on YouTube and the Dr. Fuck Show radio show Thursday nights on thatmetalstation.com. That's right. It's a good show. I, I, I tune in every once in a while. It's a good show. Thank you. Thank you. Lou, Mavs, where can we uh, listen to you? Well, uh, when, you, when you ever do a show. <laughs> first of all, I always love doing Rat Style Review. Happy to be here for the first time. On uh, This podcast belongs to them. And I have my own podcast, uh, Music is Life with Lou Mavs, where I talk about my opinions and tell uh, fellow musicians out there, follow your passion, don't worry about the money, because you know what? It's the art that matters. And when I'm going to do my next episode... When I have the fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> but exclusively can be found on the Rat Style Review Network. That's right. right on. And check out your, okay. his, last ep- his last episode. That was pretty brutal, the last one, if I'm thinking of the last one correctly. Where you start going off on everybody. <laughs> oh, I went off on everybody because, uh, first of all, oh, I, don't, I don't care what Tommy Lee and Sebastian Bach think. Yes, and true. they haven't done anything relevant since, well, Sebastian since 95. Because Subhuman Race was awesome. And Tommy Lee since, so, uh, 83, when Shot of the Devil came out. Um, small interjection there. 95, Pam Anderson, the sex tape. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> holds the horn with his dick. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, I knew Ralph. That know. was amazing. <laughs> the part I was talking about. Okay, okay, the one exception would be the 94 self-titled Karabi album. I dig Karabi. that Karabi album, I really do. Okay, so three things. Three things he did. Not really Motley Crue, but it's a damn fine album. Good album, not a crew album though. Yeah, great drums on that album. That sound of the drums on on that album is Mm -hmm. phenomenal. Sorry, really, what makes that record for me is the drums. Other than that, I really don't think it's all that interesting. But Uh, I really dig it. I dig that musically. I mean, there's a couple of songs, but for the most part, I was like, wow, this is better than what Motley Crue's been doing. It's a shot of the devil, you know? <laughs> True. Oh, I'm sorry. I had four things. Driving a freaking boat with his dick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this is not a Motley Crue Cruise show. Oh, please God, check God. out the... Yeah. Please check out the people I can interview, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye. Cheers. I loved Conspiracy. That's a great record. His makeup with that, the story, everything, the Sleepless yep. Nights video. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's a cool video. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a really cool video because I think uh, we we were maybe not the first band, but we were among the first that did you know that kind of style, uh, mm-hmm. which I you could see many years later uh, bands did that same kind of you know black and white and a little bit you know I don't know I I don't know you know there's always those. Uh, um, you know, companies involved uh, where they decide, you know, the producer decided a lot, you know, uh, you don't have anything to say about it. I mean, King had always have, of course, but I think they really succeeded the, to get the, the horror and, you know, get the image of the band in that video. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, definitely. What do you think about all the costumes and stuff you guys used to wear back then? I got a picture of a poster. I don't know if you remember taking this picture, but it's got like a reddish, reddish background, and it's you, uh, Snowy, and King, and uh, Andy in the poster, and you're wearing uh, chaps and some kind of red pants under them, and uh, and a big perm. Oh, handed. okay. <laughs> <laughs> w- w- big what? Uh, like a big perm hairdo. Okay. Yeah, that's not perm. That's my natural. That's your natural hair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, lucky 100% you. Hundred percent natural. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not anymore though. But um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember that photo. Yeah, I remember that photo. That, you know, there was no costumes. There was, there was just like uh, in for you know to prepare for for every tour. If you look at uh, the year before that, like in that picture, Andy is where he's wearing my jacket. Oh really? Okay. That I had hmm. for the Zen tour. Okay. So we had two sets of clothing. So I had with my snakeskin white uh, pants and white jacket, 
and then I had that uh, that jacket which uh, Andy's wearing in that picture. He he actually I don't have a jacket. Can I get yours? So, yeah, take it. <laughs> so it's actually my then jacket that Andy's wearing in the conspiracy picture. Wow. <laughs> so. Nice. So that picture was taken so, for the conspiracy because uh, we were having a discussion about that uh, online a couple of days ago when that picture was taken. Yeah. So that's them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, conspiracy. All right. Cool. Yeah. So so me and Hal, we, we had chaps. He had uh, chaps with a lot of, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Um, like, a, so, like mirrors, reflecting mirrors and stuff like that on it. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. And yeah. mine were all black. Yeah. And uh, that was just, you know, in that that time period right. where, uh, you know, that would kind of, you know, what do you say, popular? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah. It looked cool. It looked cool. So we just bought them on Melrose Avenue, I remember. <laughs> and we were out shopping and we had this uh, lady who's a um, stylish lady, you know, worked for a company is going to choose clothing for us and um yeah now when we had michael denner on the show that was one reason that he said that he uh didn't want to do king diamond anymore is uh not dressing up like that no okay (laughs) i i I don't think we were dressed up though uh i think we it was just you know you had got some kind of Something that sets you, something that separates you from the other bands. It was that, like you said before, it's, yeah. it's definitely from the time period because a lot of bands, you yeah. know, dressed like that. So, and and they did, but um, you know, uh, the the guys in King Diamond, all their clothes I always felt were chosen pretty well because one of yeah. the first um, concert videos I ever had was actually a uh, uh bootleg of the conspiracy tour i think from somewhere in texas but everything you know even the outfits it all kind of ties together into the stage show and the story it never really bugged me yeah. other other than whoever wore that eye patch on abigail that was a little much it was timmy <laughs> timmy yeah. yeah he didn't like that either i heard he took that off um so uh, when Mickey uh, left King Diamond, was that that was before Conspiracy, right? Yeah, I can tell you that story too. So mm-hmm. we came back from the Dem tour, and uh, Mickey had an argument um, with King, and uh, I, it ended up like he said, "I'm leaving the band," mm-hmm. and uh, we didn't really believe him, but he mm-hmm. made up his mind. He said, "Yep, yeah, I'm leaving." Wow. Okay. Uh, so it was just uh, the four us, four of us left, and uh, we started looking for drummers, of course. So uh, we had a couple of weeks where drummers flew in from all over the world uh, trying out, and you know it, it was pretty it was pretty busy and hard work because we were standing there and we had twenty guys. One guy come in one after the other and playing, and you know, hardly there was it was weird because some guys just flew in to get the autographs. Really? Know, they didn't. They were not there for for the drumming. You know, they wow. just came as fans. And, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was just a waste of time. And then yeah, yeah, and, that's, you know, eighty percent of the guys were not comparable drummers at all. They couldn't right. play. You know, yeah. it's like hardly no one could, you know, nail the Mickey D stuff. So finally, I said, you know, fuck it. You know, I'm I'm going out drinking. I can't take this anymore. And I have a drummer in, in Gothenburg, mm. but King didn't really believe me. He didn't really uh, uh, thought that I had a guy. But as I have this young guy in Gothenburg, he, he can nail anything mm. on Mickey's drumming. And he's super young, but he's super good. Yeah, and and I think that King wanted maybe someone more experienced or you know whatever. Mm-hmm. So they decided to go with uh, what was his name, Chris. Uh, anyway, he was the drum tech for 
uh, Tommy Aldridge. Yeah, he was okay. a for Tommy Aldridge. And he sent in a video, and on the video he was playing in a you know PA system, and it sounded good and everything. But you know, that's a whole different thing to nail it without you know any PA and just in front of four guys. Right. So, so he didn't cope either. So, and then you know, all of a sudden we we didn't have a drummer. We were like, whoops, that went that chance. So I said, okay, you know, what about listening to me for once and fly that guy here and try him out <laughs> and king finally said okay let's let's see what you know what he can do so i went back to sweden uh picked up tommy and we came back and uh and he was in the band wow cool so how did um how did uh mickey d get to uh back into recording the conspiracy album though yeah, so, so okay, yeah, that's the, I was coming to that. So, because me and Mickey and Hal, we were still, you know, super friends. We were partying, you know, and drinking and uh, hanging out in L.A. And, and um, uh, you know, when we didn't have a drummer and the recordings were going to start, you know, we had booked the studio, everything, and, and we didn't have a drummer. Yeah. And so I, I, I told King and I said, what about Mickey doing the drums? Because we need him. You know, uh-huh. we need him for this record. And King said, no, 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 no way. No way he's going to do the drums. Uh, <laughs> but then finally, when we didn't find a drummer, uh, and me and Hal said, you know, we can, we, I, I promise you, we can convince Mickey to come back and to do the drums because... It was kind of, you know, they were not even on speaking terms. Yeah. Uh, well, so we, so while we were out drinking, me and Hal, we kind of, you know, worked on Mickey. Hey, Mickey, what do you think? <laughs> that was going to be fun, you know. Blah, blah, blah. And and finally, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. so, so that's how we got Mickey to do Cosmere's album. And King uh, agreed. And, uh, you know, they paid Mickey as a session drummer. Yeah. And uh, the... I think that the agreement was that he's not going to be in pictures on the album, and, and but he's gonna, you know, he's gonna give credit for it. I think it's he get credits on the album. Yeah. And and lucky that we did that because uh, that's that's also why Conspiracy turned out to be such a great album. Mm. Because I think Mickey's so because drum- yeah, Mickey's drumming and. You, you guys' guitar playing, I mean, it just gets so much stronger on Conspiracy that the band was a monster at that point in time. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, you know, Mickey, Mickey is uh, always involved in arrangements, you know, and he, and his drumming is, is uh, you know, such a, what do you say, had such a, an impact. Mm. It's, mm-hmm. It wouldn't be the same without yeah. Mickey. Right. Yeah, especially if it's a continuing uh, story, you know? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Now, how did you... I meant to ask this before when we were talking about them. How did you like the production on them? Because I noticed it's a, it's very, um, like, thin-sounding. Do you feel that way? Yeah, I don't know what happened. Uh, at the At the time, in the studio, it sounded good, but then when it came out, it was mm-hmm. kind of... You liked it because the sound was uh, it was different, you know. It didn't yeah. sound like anyone else. Uh, but it's a little bit damped, a little bit, you know, compressed or whatever. Mm. I don't know what they did, uh, actually. And I, I wasn't, you know, uh, aware at the time uh, the sounding. We thought it sounded good, you know. Yeah. You know, when you work on new songs and you're in the studio... Of course, you're excited, you know, because uh, I think still it sounds good, it, even right, though yeah. in whole I can see what you're talking about. Yeah, it's like missing like yeah. a little bit of bass or something to it, just the uh, you know different sound. Yeah, I think there was a studio we were in. Uh, yeah. It was a new built studio, and uh, Roberto hadn't worked there, uh, what I remember. So it, it was a you know, one of those chances that you take someone sometimes. Yeah. You know, you never know when you enter a studio how the equipment works and the rooms and 
you know, everything. But uh, we had fun time recording them, though. It was, mm-hmm. it was a blast. Yeah. Now you just brought up a name, uh, Roberto. I'm sure you're uh, uh, referring to the keyboard player at the time. Roberto is uh, the producer. Oh, Roberto. Oh, Roberto. Yeah, Roberto oh, oh, okay. Yeah, Roberto yeah. Falcao. All right. How was it work? How was it like working with the keyboardist? Because um, you know he was with King Diamond all the way. I think from the first album, right? Uh, Fatal Portrait, all the way to yeah. the, the eye. Yeah. And then yeah. he just disappeared. Yeah. I have no idea what happened. I no. think what happened was that uh, this is just guessing. You know, mm. only King can answer. But uh, yeah. since King moved to Dallas and 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 uh, had his life there, and the record industry was uh, you know bad for metal at the time, and you know, so I think just a natural kind of uh, department. It, it was. Uh, I don't think. I don't think um, it was a. Uh, decision made it just happened yeah i think yeah now robert is, is he was fun to work with he he um great guy yeah and yeah it seemed like when he, he when he left the band um yeah you know, it kind of wasn't the same like obviously when you left the band too it really wasn't the same anymore when he came back with the uh spider's lullaby it was kind of like a different band but um yeah, I think somehow, like with him gone, it's just it's missing something. Especially with you gone too, you know. Obviously, I mean, he's got awesome musicians in the band now. Mike Weed and um, the bass player. I don't, I can't think of the bass player's name off the top of my head. But uh, yeah, it, it definitely changed a lot since you, since you were gone. Um, favorite song off of Conspiracy. Favorite song of Conspiracy, probably Sleepless Nights. Really? At the Graves is a good song. I uh, agree. At the Graves, I think, is the, probably the best King Diamond song ever. <laughs> just the yeah, way that thing, good, the way great. that thing starts mm-hmm. off, and it just uh, you know goes on and on from there. It's just yeah. awesome. No, I love it. I love it. I didn't back then when we recorded. I thought um, I remember uh, it wasn't one of my favorites, but it grew. You know, it grows on you, and then all of a sudden, it's like wow. You know. Yeah, and today, today is that it's one of my favorites. At the yeah. Graves, the Sleepless Nights, those two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now I, I've asked everybody since uh, we've been doing this these interviews, uh, with King King Diamond always saying that he has all these spiritual things happen to him. Did you ever experience anything during recordings, or while you were, were with him on tour or anything? Um. Uh... Not really. I was too drunk to notice him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, too funny. Uh, and you know, uh, I, the spirits were afraid of me when I was drunk. That's why they didn't bother. Me. <laughs> <laughs> they knew to stay away. That's yeah. Funny. I was what? more evil than the, the evil spirits. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I stopped drinking. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. What is uh, actually? I asked some questions before from uh, the King Diamond Merciful Fake Group, and um, some people had some questions. One person wanted to know what was the evilest thing that you'd done on tour, if you ever had anything evil done on tour. No, I can't think of anything special evil. Um, there's a lot of stories. You know, I'm saving <laughs> it for a book that I'm writing. Um, Give us one oh, really oh, bad thing. One really bad thing. <laughs> one really bad thing? Yeah. Well, it, it's going to be a whole chapter in Snowy's book. He's writing on a book. Oh, right him now. too? Well, yeah. actually, th- you probably won't come out until... Because I promised Snowy this won't come out until next year. So I'll promise that for you too. After the book comes out, this will probably be out too. So. Well, you, you can release this whenever you want to release it. I don't care. Okay. Go. Yeah. <laughs> the most evil thing, I don't know. Um, it was crazy days because, um, like I said, me and Hal, we were animals. <laughs> As we were, we were crazy. And um, there was this thing in uh, Montreal when, when um, uh, I was on a drinking bin and I was totally out of it 
and so out of it, you can, uh, you know, uh, this story uh, is a long story, but I do the short version here. Okay. But anyway, I, I, uh, I totally trashed the hotel room, and uh, I was, um, hell, I actually woke up in the middle of the night that I was standing on top of him, and I said, I'm going to kill you, you fucking vampire. And and uh, I had a stick in my hand that's gonna throw you know drive a stick to his heart. <laughs> wow, that was pretty oh, evil. What do you think? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Good thing you didn't go through with that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, yeah, and and like I said, Snowy has a whole chapter in his book about it. Yeah, yeah I can't wait for that. He's he's talked about that a little bit on the show. Sounds good. Mm-hmm. I'm a huge Snowy fan. I'm a drummer as well, and he's uh, influenced me a lot. So I'm a big yeah, fan of Snowy. Snowy's a good kid. Yeah. Kid? He's like 50-something years old. What are you talking about? He's always going to be a, the little kid for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. Uh, one other question that I have here. Oh, um, during the, um, the Them album, what kind of equipment did you use? Do you remember? Um... Uh, yeah, I remember. We used uh, Marshalls. I used. Um, I still have them. You know those old. There's no master volume. You just crank it up and you just you know play the heck out of it. I had three fifty watts um, Marshalls, and then we had a uh, Galen Kruger. Okay, cool. That's because that's what one asked them. One person asked if you had that uh, amp, and you do. Very cool. What? What was that? One person did ask if you did use uh, the Galen Kruger amp. So you answered that oh, question. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it it um it varies on various on different songs. Uh, I know the Welcome Home lead that I do uh, is Marshall. Mm-hmm. Mar- just a, a Marshall and a Tube Screamer. That's it. Yeah. So any favorite uh, guitar pedals too, or no? Uh, no. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm so old style, so I don't even follow all the gear that's com- coming out now. Oh, wow. Know, with the, the stuff, yeah. Cool. I still have my old Metaltronic stuff in my garage. Really? Mm-hmm. Just wait, waiting to break it out? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I got I got it, I got uh, endorsed by um, by uh, companies, but you know since I haven't been active, you know, out playing and stuff, uh, that was back in with the disaster piece thing. I got uh, some endorsements with yeah. some preamps and and stuff, and those sounds pretty cool. But you know, I need a guitar tech to work with me mm. uh, to get you know the real sound. You have to have you know couple of days in a studio and you know go through the stuff and try to find the right settings and all that yeah whatever happened to the uh, disaster pieces that ever going to come back or you're just done with it we'll see we'll see you know Mm. like i said i had a couple of interesting calls just uh, these few days here Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we'll see what happens is that the meeting that you stood me up for this morning? <laughs> yeah, yeah kind, of, kind of, yeah. yeah. No, you're going to be blown away when you know what I'm working on right now. Oh, yeah? What awesome. Yeah. Give us a hint. The, the, whole, the, whole, the whole world's going to be blown away. I hope so. People oh, want to hear yeah. from you, man. Nobody's, people haven't heard from you in a while. People want to know what's going on. Yeah, but you know, the thing is, when, like I said... It, in the 90s, we're gone, you know, no yeah. one, I mean, you know, it was, hard, it was hard to even make records or out playing and, and, and then uh, 2000 when everything or 2000, when did it start? 2010, maybe, you know, when mm-hmm. everything started to gearing up again. Yeah, yeah. Um, About that. You know, and I, I, I'm a, today I have a, a lifestyle that I like, you know, I, uh, I don't work. I have had my business. I, uh, do whatever I want to do. I just take care of my family. And, and, uh, like I said, I offered King to come back in the band yeah. in 2000, 
2013 or 2012 or something. Yeah. Um, of course, I thought it was a great idea uh, to now, have now, you know. Was that was that the point uh, when was that the point when um, Sean Drover was leaving or I can't remember. Um, I don't know who. Yeah, he left. I think he left way before that. But okay. this was when this was right after King's recovery. You know, after his triple bypass oh, okay. operation, yep. okay, and all, all right. that. And um, and I called him up, and we we talked for you know hours on the phone, just you know because we hadn't talked for so many years. Yeah. And uh, and it was really really fun, you know, talking to him again and and. Uh, then um you know uh, they went on tour uh 2013 i think yeah 2013 it's got to be um and um he said he's going to use the guys that he you know were familiar to him and you know blah 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 so yeah, yeah. well at least you kept in, uh, kept in contact decision. with him yeah well he is playing in a new album so you never know that's right yeah, you never know. Right. Someone can fall down a stair. Wish him bad luck on him, huh? Yeah. Um, I actually had a uh, a question about uh, conspiracy, just something I had heard. I was curious about real quick, if you don't mind, Pete. Yeah. Um, so I had heard that uh, KK Downing does a guest spot on the instrumental oh, yeah. on that something weird. Did you get to play with him, or is it just him alone on that? Um, listen, I don't know where these rumors come from. I didn't see KK Downing in the studio. Maybe I was too drunk or out of the studio, <laughs> but I had never heard of this or seen KK down in the studio. It could be possible that he actually was in the studio just popping in uh -huh. and, and doing something because uh, um, our producer uh, produced Judas Priest, as you know. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it could be. I, I, I don't know. I didn't see him. I, I, I didn't play with him. And uh, I haven't heard it. You know, which huh. is the kind Interesting. of, you know, yeah. It sounded a little I, I haven't uh, heard far this, fetched. You know, huh? It it, uh, it sounded a little far fetched to me. <laughs> yeah, I read it somewhere. Uh, I don't know where. Uh, you know, maybe a couple of years ago, and I was going like, "What?" You know, it beats me. I, I you know, because I didn't see him. Yeah, and, and and the thing about it is, too, you know, uh, since I had read that, I went back and listened to it. It it, it uh, doesn't sound like his style to me, you know. It sounds like King Diamond. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But Chris Sangaridis, the guy, he, uh, like I said, he produced, uh, I think, maybe one or two Jesus Priest albums. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know he did Painkiller. Yeah, so... Yeah. Have no idea. I, I uh, honestly, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of him as a producer, Chris? Yeah. Super nice guy. Mm. You know, rest in peace. You know, he died. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Uh, super nice guy, and you know, if you look at his track record, awesome records. Yeah. That he produced yes. an awesome band, you know everything. Uh, I think uh, he was great, uh, but uh, since King always know what he's what he wants, mm. he he kind of he didn't let Chris interfere too much because King and Roberto Falcao uh, they did most of the producing. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It it was it was it started out that Chris, you know, he was in charge and trying to do this and that and boo boo boo. But King didn't like it, so he kind of you know said, "This doesn't work." You know, mm -hmm. instead of fire Chris, uh, we kept him, and uh, 
he worked a lot with me and Andy. So uh, we were, uh, you know, looking for the perfect guitar sound, and we were, uh, you know, when we did the lead, uh, he was always, uh, Roberto were never there. So yeah. it was only me and Chris working, you know, in the studio. It says on the album that he produced the lead guitar, but that's bullshit. You can't produce a, a, a solo. I mean, I know what I'm playing. <laughs> I'm in charge of my playing. Well, so you don't know if KK was, was there. So. It was a nice gesture, I think, to don't, you know, let him feel too much left out, kind of, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, from what I've seen, he always seemed like a cool guy. Some some records, super nice done. guy, super nice yeah. guy. We 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 had we he loved Indian food as I do, so oh, yeah. and Andy too. So we there was like an Indian restaurant across the street, and we spent a lot of time yeah. eating Indian food. One one record he did, I don't. I mean, I love the band, but uh, the the album could have been better. Uh, Halloween's Pink Bubbles, Pink Bubbles Go Ape. I don't know if you are a fan of Halloween at all. No, I I hardly know any songs. I know oh, the band, okay. but I haven't yeah, heard yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. he did that album, and it's probably, it's not one of their worst ones, but you know it's different from their other stuff. Okay. Yeah. What? <laughs>